Thank you. This meeting is being recorded. All right, now I'm going to pause it. All right. Well, uh, thank you for joining us for the Willard Ave Sewer Separation Project meeting. I'm Zach Cronin, Assistant City Engineer for Portsmouth. I'm here with Tyler Reese, Associate Engineer for Portsmouth, and David Fosis, Construction Engineer. And with CMA, our design engineers, we have Phil, uh, Phil Corbett and um, Whitney Bouchard. Hi. So this project is to separate the sewer uh, from the drain in Willard Ave. There have been a number of odor complaints, and it's good practice generally to separate sewer and drainage. Uh, it reduces the number of CSO events that we have, and uh, it reduces the amount of drainage that then goes to the wastewater treatment facility that then needs to be treated, which is fairly costly. So at this point, I will begin our presentation and pass it over to Phil. Great. Thanks, Zach. Uh, Right, so tonight we'll, we'll mainly go through kind of the project objectives and uh, we have some people here and some people online, but also we'll post this and the main uh, goal of the meeting and getting this information out is to solicit feedback uh, and hear what residents' concerns are and because uh, now's the time to hear those so we can incorporate them in uh, as we progress with the design. Um, we've done some conceptual layouts, but beyond that, we haven't just gather some information, uh, and now's the time we'll start to really look earnest at moving ahead with the design. Uh, so we did introductions, and city staff and us and you guys, and then for the meeting agenda. So talk about the, the more specifically the purpose of this meeting. Review what the project limits are, uh, purpose of the project, what we have done to date. We'll look at what the preliminary schedule is, and then most importantly, um, well, talk about what some of the public outreach has been done, what will happen, and then most importantly, we'll be getting some comments if you guys have concerns, and then as people can watch this on the website, hopefully we'll get some more feedback too. So purpose of the meeting, go through the scope of what's going to be involved with the project that we know now, uh, solicit uh, residents' concerns and ideas prior to really get going with the design, and then also talk a little bit about the, the basement surveys, those involved going into private homes and what those are for and what to expect. So project limits, and there's a printed map there for you folks here. Um, this is the project area, and this is what needs to be done uh, in order to separate the utilities and um, connect up to the previously done work. You're kind of surrounded on all sides by, as you know, by construction that's been done already. You're like one of the last little pockets uh, there that hasn't been done. So this will kind of complete this whole area um, and will upgrade the utilities and drainage. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But that's the scope of the project. Some of these areas, like the end of Willard, uh, you know, between Marston and Wyberg, it's already been done. Uh, and part of Ash Street, but the rest of that project limits are what we're anticipating will be involved. And uh, something to mention, I did not bring up earlier, is that <clears> while <throat> the streets are open, it's a great opportunity to replace the water mains as well. So we'll be doing that at the same time. Yeah. Oh, we can just into this. Good. Uh, so, right. So, replacing water mains and services. So, the mains in the streets, and then it'll upgrade water mains to the property lines and we'll connect up to the existing water service at that point with a new little shut off curb stop valve. And the same thing with uh, with sewer mains. Uh, I, I don't anticipate that we'll have to reconfigure too many of those. Uh, you know, we had the, the Union Street project is moving in parallel with this for some reasons of efficiencies with uh, design and information gathering. And that's a little bit different animal where you got to reconfigure people's basements to connect up the sewer. Here we really want to know what's going on and make sure we understand that the proposed sewer and water is going to work with what we want to do and make sure we're accommodating any basement drains, sump pumps, and aligning things that they should be. Um, so that's the that's the reason for that. Uh, and then we will be separating the storm drainage from the sewer um, and providing new uh, yeah, new entirety drainage system. 
as was done in your adjacent projects. Um, and as we can we look to incorporate LID as low impact development, so some water quality treatment type things. We, it's, it's difficult in urban streetscape corridors to fit things, but if there's tree wells or some other type of uh, LID features, we look to incorporate that into the project um, to treat some of the stormwater we're capturing before it heads downstream. Uh, and then, of course, after all the utilities are replaced, reconstruction of the roadway curb sidewalks, um, adding new sidewalks. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously, Zach addressed it. There's, uh, uh, you're in a unique situation with um, the, a large gravity main that's accepting flows from Lafayette Road pump station and a lot of the city south of you uh, pumps into the pump station and discharges down the sewer main that goes down Willard uh so there's been some older issues with that so we're uh uh we're, we're still investigating and, and right I, I think that what has been done to date has been to treat the symptoms uh and it's really trying to figure out what's the root cause and making sure we can address things as a part of this project uh so right talked about obviously sidewalks are uh sporadic discontinuous um, they're even on, uh, you know, Orchard Street, and they kind of start and stop at this side of the road and that side of the road. So we'll be looking at, um, you know, providing continuous ADA concrete sidewalks uh, throughout the project limits, not necessarily on both sides of the road on every street, but I think Willard, yes, and then uh, we'll evaluate everywhere else what makes the most sense, probably Orchard, yes, as well. Um, and then maybe not on Ash Street, uh, you know, understanding the demand for the sidewalks and the needs and residences and what we're trying to connect versus impacts of living sidewalks and all those sorts of things. Um, but certainly what's out there now is uh, it's a bit of a mess and a snatch of materials and things like that. So all that will get upgraded as a part of the project. Uh, and then there's a lot of drainage issues as well. Um, we'll get addressed with upgrading the drainage system, but also reconfiguring, you know, making minor adjustments to the roadway profile and grading. You know, particularly, there's a lot of drainage that comes off of uh, Lafayette Road and kind of comes down Willard Street, and that inundates a lot of the sidewalks in the street. Um, so dealing with that, making sure we're capturing things appropriately and getting drainage out of people's driveways and all that, that sort of thing. Uh, and we will, you know, there, there will be impacts to existing trees, um, we will assess what's out there now. And if there's there's trees that are in poor health, we'll consider whether those should get taken down regardless. Um, and again, there will be some that'll just have to come up as a part of the utility construction because uh, there'll be root damage or they'll just be in the way. Um, but, you know, we, we consider all of that and we're trying to lay things out and certainly uh, try to preserve things as we can, but pretty much assess every tree in the right of way and, and make decisions uh, as far as what has to come out. And then if we do take out trees, what do we end up with and replace some of those tree trees? Uh, so right, I think we don't have final roadway layouts, right? We're just working through the concepts of this now, but likely a, a proposed um, section for Willard Avenue looks something like this, which is uh, consistent with what the section looks like past Marston. So I wanted to see what it's going to be pretty much going to be like that, likely, unless there was a reason to do it otherwise, but which is about 32 feet wide, curb to curb. So it might be a little bit narrow, narrower in areas, but pretty consistent with what you have now. And then new five and a half foot sidewalks on either side of the road. Uh, and then Orchard Street, I think this little section is actually just the part that kind of comes around the corner and comes down, we'll have to look at specifically what we do there. That's narrow now, and uh, we'll need to understand you know, where we need to end up to provide safe vehicular access, pedestrian access, and sidewalks, and you know, minimize impacts to the folks. So we'll, they'll likely just continue to be kind of a narrow section of Orchard Street. Uh, it may not be complete, but we'll, we'll see what makes the most sense. That's looking north. Well, it's north south, so that would be, you know, as you 
as you come around and connect up to Willard, you kind of come around the corner, yeah. it gets considerably narrower. That's my house, by the way, is right on that corner of Willard and Orchard. So okay. Oh, yeah, that is looking north, actually. That yeah, that's that south. aspect is looking north towards the curve of the right. orchard. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, that's so true. my house, that grass strip there would be my my house. There's no, on the left side, there's no sidewalk there now. And that's right. what that's you're proposing. Yeah, I mean, again, that's, that's possible. Yeah, possible. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll be some challenges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there will be. And, and right, what, you know, we don't want to have a sidewalk just for the sake of it. If it's needed to get people off the street, if there's demand for it and safety issues, and certainly that, that's typically what's done with these projects. Um, but right, we're balancing that with impacts and everything else. Uh, so I think the rest of Orchard Street will, will likely be similar to what we're seeing on Willard. Um, similar kind of layout. There's it's a little bit more constrained. There's more of a work with on Willard than there is an Orchard. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, you know private property that's pretty much built right up to the right of way. So trying to work with all that, we'll, we'll see where we end up. But it'd likely be something similar to what you're seeing on Willard. Um, and then fairly narrow, the orchard court, you know, on the south side of Willard, there will be uh, probably not a sidewalk and just pretty much replace what's there now. There's a few homes that that serves. And Ash Street would probably be a little bit narrow. We could we could see what makes the most sense for that. 20 feet is consistent with a lot of the other projects that have been done in the city, um, and it's a little bit less volume road, but we'll. We don't want to over constrain either, so we'll see what, what I think there's room to do what we need to do there. Uh, and the next one, I think, is just kind of before and after. It won't be spring and winter before and after, but that's <laughs> a picture. So, just to give you an idea, you know what it's like on that one end, but that's that's what it is. Um, that's what we have now, and this will ultimately be. So, curves the entire. Yeah, yeah, and that's that can be a challenge when there's not curves to try to make. Drainage work and work, yeah. you know, work to not trap drainage on yeah. the sidewalk, the roads that you're trying to get out, right? So that's, uh, yep. Are you talking about putting a sidewalk on the top on Ash Street? Yes, we are looking at that. Yes. And, and it, it, again, as Dave said, that's not, none of that is set in stone, but if there's ideas people have that they, they think there is or is not demand for something like that, that's something to consider. We haven't, we haven't worked through all that. And that's, that's what we will do is that we'll take this feedback, continue to work with the city to start to develop these layouts. And then that's what we present at the next one say, hey, this is what we think we should do. And before we finalize that, we get everybody's input on what they think of the layout. And then from there. We do have another meeting coming up in April. So this is the collect information from residents and then come back with a solution. This might be getting into the weeds here a little bit, but to you, in order to not um, modify the drainage issues. Do you lower the road base? Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. 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 You can. Yep. There. Right. It is. It is a little, a little bit more kind of, You know, you have to have cover over gas veins and things like that. But there. Um, yes. That is before, before you move that picture. So if you're looking at the bottom one, that right hand corner has a drain on Willard Ave. Is that going to stay where it is? Because that's often right now it's completely clogged with snow, snow piles. It can be clogged with uh, leaves. And I know if you can see it, but our house is on the right hand on the other side. It's the absolute lowest point of all sides. So when that drain across the road is clogged up now, if we get water, it comes straight to us. So one of the things we do uh, are, is, is to take survey and get topographical elevations, figure out where the best places to put uh, catch basins are. I am sorry that that catch basin is full. Uh, we can note that and get better maintained. I think the thing to take away is that where the drains are now is not necessarily where the yeah. drains are. Right. The drains will be engineered. Yeah. Also Probably like they should have been right. when the road was originally built, but then they didn't have the engineering science back then. Right. So but this is always where they put the snow. 
So, yeah, so if you come to that, if you come here in the summer, you're not really going to yeah, see no, I mean, it. And, and, right. It's, yeah, it's, no, it's cool. Cool. In, in New England, it is a challenge when you, yeah. like, now yeah, we're ready to rain tomorrow when things are snowy and it's, oh, it's, it's going to be a big thing. Right. Things so, never work <laughs> like they should. There, there, there always are challenges. Good. <laughs> <laughs> There's challenging times when you're pounding on greens to work, but yeah. they're blocked by leaves and snow. And yeah. So, it, right. But yes, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that exact catch basin. I will be someday. Well, and, uh, I just, yeah, if you just yep, make a yep, note of yep. that specific one is all over the issue. Yep. It's I think it's on the, the Ash and Willard. Yep. Okay. That's where they put the big snow pile where yeah, the kids play. Kids love it. They yeah. sled on it, but yeah, the, drain, so, the drain is gone. So actually in this picture, the, the this is the uh, ash on the south side of Willard. It won't be the, the other section between Willard and Orchard wouldn't be this narrow. This is about 24 feet wide, but generally kind of similarly, I would prefer to the sidewalk. So uh, work completed to date. So we've done some site investigation, including Zach talked about, we've gotten topographic survey of everywhere. They measured uh, you know, all the ground elevations and the inverts of utilities and located all that. Uh, and then we've begun to look at the conceptual layout of the utilities so we can understand project limits and how things might work. Um, and then from here, we, I mentioned the, the basement survey, so we'll talk about that a little bit, but, uh, you know, um, that is to understand what, where your services are coming out of your home and what elevations and particularly accommodating drains oftentimes you know when there wasn't an option so there was drains connected to the sewer so we try to provide a separate option for that we're going to provide a drain service that you can connect into and, and make sure that works best for each home uh, and then another uh, site investigation will be geotechnical investigation so there's the kind of faded picture beyond there is a drill rig truck so probably in the next month or so, there will just be a couple of days of uh, them taking boring. So they're just drilling down to and investigate subsurface conditions, the depth of the ledge, and what we have under there for gravels and the elevation of groundwater and all sorts of things. So you'll, you'll see them out there doing that, but that, that shouldn't be too disruptive. Uh, right, so I think I covered this. Identify configure sewer drain the basement. Do you have a sump pump for floor drains? Uh, and I think and water services. Yep. So whether they're iron or copper. Yeah, material type of a water yeah. service. Yep. Will you gas lines coming to the building? Anything like that that we can acquire data, it helps when you start <clears throat> it really, really helps. It's very important. So right, it'll be uh there's a, a subcontractor that works with us to help us do this. Um they have a person team and they just come knock around the door to the best identifications. Nobody has to let them in if there's concerns, but again, as Dave describing, it's helpful. Uh, and this will be posted on the website too. Yep. Um, and we're scheduling those now, but they're there. If you do, if you don't schedule one, um, they will go knock on the door. If they don't get anybody, they'll leave the door hanging. It's kind of a multi step process to try to, try to get into everyone's home. Sure. And when, when would this uh, be? So the yeah. basement survey is for the schedule the next Friday. Maybe. Beginning, uh, mm -hmm. beginning next week and running through to the end of February. Oh, yeah. that's soon. Okay. Yeah, I think the uh, next ones are just the actual survey, which you're not going to be able to see up there, but if you looked at this online, you can kind of see what information you're looking for. So that's just the next few slides. So I'm not going to go through that, but if you wanted to download it, you could take a look at what's going on and what they're looking for. Right. And then the next one. This um, the yep. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. And I, I signed up for being on the mailing list. I don't know what that means. Do. So that's uh, anytime we have public outreach that needs to go out, uh, any okay. schedule updates, or okay. really uh, when the next public meeting is, and then during construction. We like to have a weekly update of what is going to be happening. Okay. So you guys can yeah, prepare right. for what types of construction and what areas they will be in. So this is the preliminary schedule, uh, and it's probably the most ambitious and schedule that there may be. The the other project that you know we're union and habit that we're working on in parallel 
is under a consent decree by EPA, so it has some requirements to get done by certain dates. Um, and this one does not, but it does make sense to uh, you know do a lot of the stuff at the same time. Um, so very very similar projects in nature for design and construction, and we have been carrying money in the capital improvement plan for this work. Willard Ave uh, is a big player. Yeah, we have fun. We have fun. Yeah, okay. Um, so, all right, mentioned the uh, basement survey starting next week. We'll be looking, we'll start next week and look to get oh. through everybody uh, through the end of February. Um, and then, boring is likely the end of February, beginning of March. And concurrently, we'll be working through the preliminary design. We'll take this feedback and continue to work out the details. Um, the utility and roadway sidewalk layout. And once we think we have a lot of those things figured out, we'll present actual proposed layouts um, of utilities. And what people really care about is the roads and sidewalks and things like that, uh, so that you can comment on those. And that's likely the April, May timeframe. And then we'll assess if we need to make any changes to what we thought we wanted to do, and then uh, wrap up the preliminary design. The next step would be to uh, move into final design uh, and hope to, to get through bidding in the winter and potentially start construction in 2023. So we that that is a potential timeline, and we would know better. Um, if it's likely that that when you know that's obviously one of the things you care about most is when when the disruption is going to start. Um, we'll know at the next public meeting how likely that's going to be next 2023 and when that. And if it moves, it's going to move back. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be around <laughs> spring 2020. Back and, and hopefully not by volumes yeah. of time. Right. It might be that the contractor starts at the end of the street and then shifts over here after that. As soon as that. Yeah, yeah. We agree. Um, so, all right, uh, our public outreach here, we have this uh, <clears throat> tonight where we're Again, gathering input. Um, and then we'll have our second public meeting present the preliminary design. And there is a specific project site, which some of you have found um, that you can get with you know, things like this presentation will be posted, a video of the meeting. Um, and then as we have project updates, they'll get posted there. Um, right. And then as mentioned during construction, that's it's nice to know kind of what to expect. Um, so if you put in your email there, you'll uh, you'll get those notifications. And that's all I had to present. So I'll we'll be happy to hear your questions and concerns. Oh, yeah. So I was just I think tomorrow would be tomorrow May might be a good field trip to see what happens with catch, some catch bases being recovered and what happens to yeah. one. Yes, no, no. My, my assumption is this will be my second time for nature. This I lived on the hill prior to Willard, so this one no will be the time I was there for that project. I've now been in um, Willard for six years. <clears throat> so, I, having seen it done once and having been in the construction industry for 20 years around town, you know, I would want to make sure that you all are aware. My assumption is that it hadn't been done because this is one of the trickier portions of the project, but the, the drainage in general is quite bad. Um, it's on the middle house on the middle block next to both in between both of them. <clears throat> and there is zero to no elevation on the majority. And then to your point, you have quite a bit up on Lafayette that comes down. <clears throat> I'm sure that the water table is affected by that, but that happens to some of the houses up top, but because most of them are slanted or built higher, even in you know 200 years ago when the city was designed, what tends to happen more with the drainage is that as you roll around, it <clears throat> drops into those homes, which then triangulate, you get orchard. Orchard itself is above water, so the water continues to come down. And in the back of our houses, this house for sure, our house. There was at some point oh, yeah. yeah. right yeah. here something. Yeah. This in uh, <laughs> in a heavy rain, you can't see this, but between on that orchard yeah. spur between yeah. Willard and Orchard, right along here. Brian lives right there, I live right here. 
This area just gets so there definitely I mean, was a broken. spring and yeah. spring and standing yeah. water. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was one of the last portions of the city to be built. There was yeah. orchards there. My house is on a landfill as we were digging and found all sorts of stuff. Lots of clay. Uh, my sump pump, I always kid that my house is like New Orleans. My sump pump will run 14, 15 times a day. No rain because of the water table. So I'm not here to say that about my home in particular, just in general, the drainage is the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, to answer your question, yeah. this is why this is the last area is because when we started the first project, we started literally at where the middle school is. Yeah. That's where the outfall is. Yeah. And we worked our way you all the way down Lincoln that. Avenue <laughs> and we're going our way uphill. Yeah. You guys are uphill. Sure. And you have the last section yeah. until the original yeah. area. Yeah. So we were required by, by the consent decree to do a certain size area to remove a certain number of cubic feet per second out of the sewer system. Yeah. We achieved that in the initial route. So now we're going back and we're just basically finishing the job in the final neighborhood. Yeah. Which when we understand, I know several people in your neighborhood understand the significant yeah. groundwater issues that we have to deal with. We have to definitely understand that we're going to design for. Now, I know um, whether or not this is a code or not is, is a matter of probably relevance here, but I know our house, when we bought it in 2013 or so, that if the sump discharge from the basement outside and then underground and now into the storm sewer yeah. on. Yeah. And which well, currently is not in the sewer. Correct, which is, yeah, right. But I mean, is there, you know, going forward, will there be a mechanism for continuing that? Yes, the yes. mechanism, you'll actually have a storm drain connection for your house. Oh, okay. That will go into the storm drain and then ultimately that will discharge into the sump. Right, so that's one of the reasons for the basement survey is you yeah. need to know where what's, what's what. Yeah, because yeah, it's not right. always obvious. Specifically, we're in your basement out of sump pump so that when we come. We're putting brains up by everybody's house. We're on the right corner. We're right. We're not on that corner. We're actually on the right corner. Yeah. So you don't have to go all the way across the basement for why. I can tell you where it leaves the basement, actually where it enters the uh the storm sewer too. Right up. So that's the type of information that we're acquiring. Okay. okay. Well, well there's and I appreciate, it. I mean, the reason I bring that up is uh, you know, what I was talking about the drainage is there's quite a public lot there. And you guys put up a curb. I expect it'll be a, a major shift, but there will still be a high volume, I would expect, of water, no matter what you do, just given with everything else. So um, the only other thought I had as you were going through, I don't know if it's a concern, but on either side of the, um, on either side of me on the, the side street, so it's Ash, the no, orchard. Uh, no, yeah, orchard. Yeah, yeah. Not, uh, yeah, so there, depending upon who owns the homes up on Lafayette, Sometimes there are cut throughs in those neighborhoods and or in those uh, people's properties, and sometimes people will let students cut through. So there are high school kids, I have high schoolers, that sometimes will use those streets as access to cut through. So I don't know if that changes the concern about um, sidewalks. So I'm just, you know, a little bit. We understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, high schoolers have it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be more, right, more pedestrian demand, you might think. Right. Yeah. What, I'm an office house. What's going to term, determine whether a tree needs to come down? I was uh, looking at that photo really? you had. My house, a tree in front of my house was prominently displayed. <laughs> which doesn't the same with that. Doesn't that doesn't mean, it so didn't give me that warm and fuzzy feeling. I um, but I do talk to the city arborist quite a lot, and, and we're actually mm -hmm. um, they actually did some work on that tree a little while ago. It is one of those trees that's old and the roots are, you know, basically, you know, basically, you know, tearing up the asphalt sidewalk there. What's going to determine whether you have to take a tree down but first or can leave it? The health of the tree to begin with, we think it could survive construction uh, or if the you know, sidewalk can accommodate the tree in that grass strip. Uh, we can then do the work near the roots and see if it can be saved. Uh, but if A, it's in poor health and won't survive construction near it, and then B, if it looks like construction near it has damaged the health of the tree, that those would be uh, the big factors in 
what would miss yeah we're certainly not going to take trees down the road so yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, we, we will we will assess the tree health of the trees first and yeah. we'll certainly you know right the city values trees and, and, and uh we try to avoid them there's times when it's unavoidable we get cabinet to exit trees but all these go through the trees and greenery committee too. Each tree gets their own hearing to get through. Uh, so it's an opportunity to have yeah, uh, people too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, tree. But yeah, no, your your tree was not. I only had so many trees. And I like that one, so that's why I hated it. Not not because it's a target for removal, but yes, no, we, we try to avoid it. It's not always avoidable. Um, right. Sometimes we go, you know, as long as we can gradually go up and over you know, the tree roots. We can use CU soils. I mean, there's all kinds of new technologies out there that you know, we can work with. I've seen other places, I think just recently on South Street, where it starts going down towards Sagamore. There's that big tree there. And instead, of, they obviously want to keep it probably because it's a very historic tree. Yeah. But I think they they had we made, the purposeful, we made the purposeful decision that we weren't going to put Sagamore. Yeah, you just put asphalt. Put asphalt. Yeah. 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 Which we're going to actually take that out. We're not going to be sure. It's not going to be a side one because of the tree. Yeah. So we do make good decisions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had the same thing with ash tree. There's trees on both sides. Ash, ash tree. Sorry. There's trees on both sides, big and small. And it is a very low pedestrian, low car area. And it was actually a question to just leave it alone. Or not yeah, make a no, sign. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it could be. Yeah. That's the type of input they were getting. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we don't live in your neighborhood. You do. Yeah. That's why it's, we're here. Yeah. It's a wide street. And this type of building. Yeah. It also has a uh, halfway across, has a almost a 90 degree jog. But in that corner, there's a sewer drain. So maybe yeah. a side, putting a sidewalk up Ash between Ash and Willard. Sorry, between Orchard and Willard. Yeah. Ash would, would be a challenge. It's very cool. It's a yeah. very quiet spot. So we're going to gather all of this. Yeah. And we're going to come up yeah. back to you. So shot. Well, that, work. we've yes, got so a couple of people with questions on Zoom. Oh, um, right. We've got Kate Hatem. Hatem, I'll let you answer, ask your question. Hello. Um, I just had a quick question about, I know you talked a lot about the sump pumps and connecting them to the storm drainage line. And so are our individual houses going to be able to connect directly to the, to those? Yes. Yes. Storm yes. Drainage line? A, a drainage service uh, can be left to each of the properties to allow to allow you to continue to use your sump pump and discharge it into uh, the drainage system. Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and that's, again, one of the big reasons we need to get in for these basement surveys is so that we know, A, that the house has a sump pump that needs to be right. connected to and B, the location to leave that service at. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Thank you. And we have Douglas Bennett. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Yeah, hi. Um, 162 Willard Corner of Orchard uh, Court and uh, Willard. Um, the sidewalk configuration uh, is, I know you haven't said many things aren't set in stone. Will you be somehow accommodating for existing landscape, whether that landscaping is on town or property based on the fact that it's been there for 30 years? Um, or are you going to basically just carve it out and go with five feet all the way down? So it's just a I'm heavily landscaped in the front of my house, and I'm just wondering how that five feet is going to encroach on what I've got right there now. So, uh, yeah. So we, if if landscape is in the right of way and we need to put a sidewalk in there, then often we do have to relocate things. We would work with you to understand what the impacts would be, give you opportunities to do things with the future configuration, or relocate things before it moved ahead. Um, so it's not certain that things get taken out, but. The idea is that we have a continuous ADA sidewalk, you know, and so it's it's hard to disrupt that um, from end to end. Uh, so if yeah, what was your address again? One sixty two Willard. One sixty two Willard. Okay. Uh, yep. So it is common that we do have impacts to uh, to private landscaping, but again, we'll we would identify that 
as part of the next meeting and say, it looks like here's where we want to keep the sidewalk. I mean, there is some flexibility uh, because of the width and the available right of way we have in Willard is more than a lot of areas of Portsmouth. Um, but I don't know exactly where your landscaping falls as opposed to where we need the sidewalk. Well, well, there's somewhat of a sidewalk there now. It's a little bit more of macadam that's been there for and deteriorated over time. So as you've mentioned, there's just kind of a hodgepodge mix of uh, sidewalks on, on, on the one side of the street there. So I, I, I just, it was a general question. I know there's, you can't be specific mm -hmm. until you get into it. So thank you. Thank you. And we have Vicki Robinson. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, great. Vicki Robinson and I live um, at 88 Orchard Street. Uh, I have a general question as to how uh, can we best provide the feedback that we want to share? I mean, to whom should we address it or is it going to be this um, specific site uh, that's, um, that's going to be up? I, my email address was included as part of the notice. If there are uh, very specific things to a single property, we can uh, you know, gather the information there. Uh, but if there's there are questions that are uh, you think would affect other properties as well, they would probably be good to hear uh, in this forum. Oh, all right. So uh, I'm not seeing your email address. Oh. I, all I have is a paper notice that came that was uh, put in the door. I apologize. I'll, uh, I'll give it my email address right now. It is Z M Cronin. So Z M C R O N I N at city of And then okay. we also have, uh, Phil as well. We could, uh, you know, so give a little bit of information exactly as well. That, that, that gets posted on the yes. website. So yes. So my contact information is on the project website. And if it's not, I will work with Stephanie to get it up there in short order. Okay, great. Thanks. I'll look again. Um, I just didn't see it. I saw Christine Berger's uh, name and contact information in two or three different places, but nobody else yeah. is. Sorry, the big focus was the basement surveys. So we, we put uh, her information up as to, yeah, she, she holds the schedule for the basement surveys. That was a big push to get her information. <laughs> All right, I'm calling Christine on that. And, um, and I know that there's energy around um, sidewalks, understandably. So what is that, are, is what I'm hearing accurate that there's flexibility as to whether sidewalks actually get installed or not, or if they do, um, is there a modification or, or is there a code we have to go by? There's the ADA uh, accessible code that they need to be of a certain width. We keep to five and a half feet. Uh, Willard and Orchard, uh, we are looking to have sidewalks on both sides of the street currently. The area of Willard uh, from Marston over to the east. Uh, we plan to continue that plan through to uh, Lafayette Road, which has these sidewalks on both sides. The, you know, some of the side streets that are far less uh, trafficked um, were some of the areas we were considering sidewalk or not. So yeah, we, we, we would, these are all still conceptual. Yeah, we would provide continuous sidewalks when we commit to providing the sidewalk. And it, it, you know, you're looking at the pedestrian demand and the number of houses that front the roadway. So at Orchard and Willard, you have a lot of homes that are up against the road that likely would meet the criteria for, for warranting sidewalks on both sides of the street. So in this particular house, there's no curbing. They park off the road. They have driveways on either side of the house. There's a tree centered in the middle of the yep. So um, likely we were going to want to put a sidewalk through there with curbing. Yes. Yeah, so there, right now you don't have a sidewalk kind of across your property and you do on either side of you so that we wouldn't do a situation like that. We would want to continue the sidewalk the whole length of it if we commit to sidewalks on both sides, which I think would be likely means on Orchard Street. So, um, so uh, excuse me, this is uh, Vicki again. And um, so Zach, did you say the, the initial concept is sidewalks on both sides of Orchard? Yes. Yes. All right. Anybody else here on Orchard thinks that 
uh, I haven't got my measuring tape, but visually it's, um, uh, if you've got to have uh, five feet of sidewalk on either side and you're going to have it on both sides, then that would really narrow the street. I, I'm thinking, I don't have, I mean, I don't have the survey in front of, I don't have the survey data, but it just seems to me it'd almost be a one-way street. Uh, yeah, no, it, it it may narrow the street some, and you might be in a situation. Not dramatically. Yeah, where, right, it, it's not going to be much from what you have now, particularly with 32 feet. I mean, further down from you, um, as you head towards Wyboard, there's sidewalks on both sides of the street, and there's just, there's some gaps in there as you head down, you know, as you head Yeah, down. Wyboard's wider. No, I mean, on Orchard Street, right? On, on Orchard Street, yeah. your neighbors have sidewalks on both sides. Yeah, they're not five and a half. Uh, so I'm just, and I don't want to make this about me. So if if um, uh, we need to have a. Um, it's okay, feel free uh, to make it about you. Uh, I know it's really all about me. So, um, <laughs> so um, there's, so the, and the sidewalk's very narrow. It's not five and a half feet. That's right. Today, nowadays, we make the sidewalks five and a half feet wide. Yes, and I understand that from clients. I think my question is, is it a requirement that there, so let me ask specifically, is there a requirement that there be sidewalks or if there are sidewalks, they, they need to meet the standard? If there are sidewalks, they need to meet the standard. And, and just given the sense of this roadway and the character of this roadway, it likely warrants sidewalks on both sides. Okay, what determines whether or not there's sidewalks on both sides? The, 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 the pedestrian demand uh, and the number of homes at front on the roadway, you know, if there's just homes on one side, then you would put a sidewalk on either side, but we, you know, if we have, it's fairly heavily populated on both sides of the roads. So there's likely pedestrian demands on both sides of the road to get to houses. So those sorts of things are all considerations of, uh, you know, when, so if it's so even okay, I just want to understand so I can give um, some um, informed feedback. So if it's where Orchard Street is not a is not a let's say a cut through. Nobody, but the people who use Orchard Street typically live on Orchard Street unless they're walking their dogs or the kids. Yep. Right. Correct. So, yeah. So even though it's it's kind of densely populated, it's not. Um, it's, it's not like, a um, it's not like Willard where Willard could, is a cut through and people are pretty, they, they go pretty fast, right? Yeah. So Orchard just connects, um, Willard and, um, Wybird. So is that a factor? Is that, yeah. uh, is that a reasonable? Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if there was, right, obviously you're less comfortable walking in the road on Willard because it's busier. Uh, yes. There's higher higher traffic demands and higher traffic speed, and that definitely is a consideration yeah. and a reason why you might not put a sidewalk or sidewalks on both sides on Ash Street. Um, uh, yes, it is a consideration. Yep. Okay, great. All right. Um, and I I'm not really taking a position, although um, I will say I don't know if there's um, if there's a pedestrian uh, need for sidewalks on both sides of the street. And I'm not saying I don't want a sidewalk on my side. I'm just saying that. <laughs> you know, it just could be unnecessary. Yeah, okay, good, thank you. Um, we have a question from Ann Wheeler. Hi there, um, thanks for taking yeah. our questions. <laughs> I'm at 110 Ash Street, so the upper end, the dead end. Yeah. Um, yep. Curious about how Information will be communicated to homeowners about the sump drainage into the storm, the storm drain, and how, how that, could you give us a little more information about that? So when the basement survey gets completed, we'll note uh, locations of where they are, and then during construction, they'll be included in design to have the drainage uh, stub left to the property. And uh, Dave, you want to pick up from there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take over. Um, so right now we're in, we're kind of we're kind of in engineering study. We're we're trying to identify all the different problems so that CMA can design a good project for us. And then the construction team will take over. At that time, they will uh, be they will contact the homeowners 
and then you'll almost be in constant contact. We'll have, uh, by sending Zach your email, you'll be on an email blog that's on every, every month or every week, we'll be talking to you and letting you know what the contractor is doing that week. And, uh, you know, the specific things going on, that's how we usually do feedback is through the email process. Okay, but great. In general, if, you know, if we're working in front of your house, you can expect uh, us knocking on your door uh, and letting you know what's going on and specifically what's going on that day. Okay, great. I'll make sure to get on the email list. Okay. Um, I do have a question about the sidewalks. Okay. Um, at the dead end of Ash, we have sidewalks on both sides of the street. However, my home uh, does not have a sidewalk in front of it. I'm at the very end of the street and the, my, the neighbor to my right uh, faces, has, a, has a South Street address. Yeah. So I'm curious, a situation like that where it's a dead end street, very low foot traffic, other than those darn high schoolers cutting through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, of course. Um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Just curious if they would be put, looking to put a sidewalk where there isn't one existing and, and doesn't necessarily, you know, call for one. Yeah, I think it's a similar situation, right? I mean, we're, we're balancing what the impacts of putting a sidewalk in are with, you know, what the impacts of that are versus the demand for a sidewalk. Um, what we wouldn't do is have a discontinuous sidewalk. If there's a commitment to provide one, then we would provide one down the street. But if it, if it makes a sense that we just want one on one side or that's what this street generally wants, then that's something that the city will accommodate. So this is the, the area of Ash that it previously had worked on. So I'm not sure yeah, we're extending. Not. I've actually, I actually put that sidewalk in many years ago, back when I was young. I, I, I don't believe we're doing it. Yeah, so I think you're actually outside of the, the project limits. That's true. I'm outside the project limits yes. for sidewalks or for? For everything. Well, I had a, a flyer stuck in my mailbox. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think uh, the general neighborhood is getting alerted because you're affected by other things that are going on, and, and you know you might walk on Willard as well. Um, so I, I think the the over noticing of that might be the issue, but I believe so, the work that's done is already so done. We're not doing any utility work on that street. Okay, so. Yes. so you're saying I won't be able to tap into the storm drainage system? I think you already have a potential connection. Huh. Okay. Well, I'd like to follow up with somebody on that. Yeah. No, we'll definitely. be in touch. Yes. Do you, so do you have my email about that? Yes. Do you have my email address? I wrote it down. I sure did. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. If there's else from our mind. Um, once you break ground, approximately how long is what's the time point? Uh good question. Um, yeah, no, we're we're I'm unsure honestly. We we there's a lot of factors that go into that with the scope of the project. Um, so once we have a better idea of the you know the scope of the costs to kind of evaluate the pace construction can get done and those sorts of things. But we're just not there yet. So it's uh um, it has gone up, I mean, it's gone up like $300 a week. What? Really? Oh my goodness. To buy the pipe, to buy it, not to put it in, to buy it because of all the yeah, supply chain. chain. So, so, so yeah. things are just really weird right now. So, yeah. I'm hoping that. By the time this is all designed, we're back to normal life, some sort of normal, if, right, normal pricing. If my kids were here, they would ask and then similar question, like how long is the road going to be going up? They like you know, skateboarding, scootering, um, yeah. you know, things with, with little wheels that are difficult to do on gravel. Yeah, they, yeah. Should, they should enjoy living on a dirt road for a summer. For a little, yeah, <laughs> but, 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 but they'll know what it's like. Is it gonna be, yeah, is it going to yeah. be? You know, would, would the dirt road be two summers? No. Okay. No. That'll be a whole summer. Okay. 
One summer we can deal two with. Two years as well. Is, yeah, I one mean, summer we can live with. It's not two summers. Okay. It's realistically, the pipe time frame is probably four or five months. Uh -huh. There's going to be a heavy construction, and then they'll and then they'll fix the road bed, and they'll put in the, the you know the first layer of paper. Okay. And then things get better. Yeah. Yeah, After yeah. That, you know, you'll have working sewers, yeah. water mains. Everything's going to be good, you know. But uh, it's, well, my assumption is you would continue it. I, I know <clears throat> on Union Street it happened about the mid project, but <clears throat> especially on the hottest days, the morning and the afternoon, it'd be like a sprinkler because. The, you know, the dust that would blow yeah. around was yeah. so that control. section of Union was half of what Willard is, so it's a pretty wide open. Dust control is a standard project. Okay, yeah, yeah, just make so we, we generally treat the, the dirt surface with calcium in the summertime. Um, and the salts it. actually draw the moisture out of the, the air, it keeps the road wet so it doesn't get dusty, and then usually the contract will hit with water. And the disruption to service water and sewer during the day is this something you know, like will we always have water or sewer no? You'll always have water. No, there'll, there'll be no be you always have water. Yeah. So one of the reasons why it takes so long to do this is because we have to keep everything going. You can't shut off the water. Yeah. You can't shut off your sewer. You can't shut off your sewer. Yeah. I mean, so we have to we have to install things. We have to install the main, we have to fill the water, we have to test it, make sure it's clean, make sure the bacteria test it, we do this, we do that, make sure it's good, and then we look at everybody's house up to it. And then we'll do the sewer, it's the same thing, we pressure test it, make sure it doesn't leak, make sure the groundwater is not getting in the sewer because that defeats the whole purpose, yeah. right? We want the groundwater to go into the drain system, not into the center. So we test that, and then we we put everybody's line of it. So it's, it's one of these multiple things where you, you have to get everything and you have to keep the other serve, everything else going while you're doing it. Right. And that's why it takes so long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so there, there may be some planned shutdowns when they have to make that connection or something. You know, shut something down, make that happen. But that would, you know, hopefully be a half a day. Or that's something. like a, you know, right. Well, we have to, the first day, when we have to start the water main. Yeah. We have to shut the water main down so that we can start extending the water. Yeah, and it doesn't blow off or something like that. <laughs> and then there's <laughs> unexpected things that happen during construction. They hit it and they shut it down. But but hopefully that doesn't happen. Right. Of course, little things happen. They're on a board. They're, they're always a board. They're on, but they're on a board. But in general, you always have water for all That's our goal. So okay. I think, I think Anne has another question. Yes. Ann, you could go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. My hand was not raised. Okay. Sorry about that. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else online, Stephanie? No, that's it. Okay. That's all set. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to piggyback on Peter Robinson. And I think these streets are very quiet. Orchard Street, Ash Street. Where you would wonder for Orchard Street if the sidewalk is five and a half feet, people could easily cross each other on one sidewalk. Yeah. Instead okay. of making the road very narrow. I just I was thinking about what you said. I guess I just put one final thought and, and maybe we address it just going back to that, you know, the, the old riverbed there. If a curb was put in, you know, the, the, the water basically puddles from kind of the middle of the block all the way over and just basically infiltrates. We're gonna just circle that right on that plane. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. I know the surveyor was took a lot of pictures, but yeah, I'll right over. Yeah, I, I've seen it myself, but I just want to make sure that we understand. Um, this is the part of the project we're in. We're you know, trying to understand what the problem. Yeah. From the week, from the big weeping willows to yeah. just beyond middle of the block. That's my house. Look at that. But, but it's. Yeah. Uh, I guess what I'm, the concern would be, be if, a, if a curb went up at the current elevation, what is the curb, six inches tall, eight inches tall, you know, it would basically just keep all the water behind it. We really, thoroughly understand that issue. Yes. No, but that's good to know. And right tomorrow, like you get a chance to see what's going on. Yep. Yeah, one of those pictures where 
And we have like a two and train day. I always go out to see how things work. Yeah. yeah. Has CMA, oh, I forgot, that was the other question I want to ask. Has CMA done most of the city to date, or did, was the firm changed? Uh, there's been, yeah, there's been different firms. We had okay. done several projects. Okay. So they um, did yeah. Sagamore Avenue for us. Uh, what else did you guys work on? Oh, you did the State Street. State Street. Uh, State Street. Uh, State Street. Uh, State Street. Yeah, Court Street. So uh, definitely enough that they're. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you for the forum. Yeah, yeah it's been good. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Appreciate it. Good. Staff meeting shut down. Are there additional comments or are we um, all set on that? Nope, I think we've gotten all of the comments. No more raised hands. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Vicki. Yeah, uh, just a big shout out to everybody who's working so hard on this. I um um we we all really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I do have one follow-up question, sorry. It's about the sum because they go 